all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Khalid, for uh, having me here. So my name is Rupert Karli, and I am one of the medical students from uh, Pakistan. And I study at Hyber Medical College, Peshawar. So uh, we are having uh, a great time in this uh, podcast session. All right. Thank you. Well, for today's uh, video, we are going to cover these three questions. What is epidemiology? Is it just about infectious disease? And what is it in it that is important for doctors and nurses? Uh, Zulfikar, what are your initial thoughts? Okay. So, uh... When I study epidemiology or when I come across the term epidemiology uh, while having talks with my friends, so I wondered that what exactly is epidemiology? So to know about uh, the exact, uh, I mean, uh, of the bread and butter of it. So what will be that? That's why I'm here to ask you, like, what exactly it is? All right. So, uh, look, I don't want to repeat what you will already know from textbooks or what your teacher will tell you in classroom. Uh, but in simple terms, how populations are affected by disease and how the, these diseases can be controlled is what epidemiology is about. And this is also called the big E or the capital E epidemiology, which pertains primarily to public health issues and to distribution and determinants of disease. But to understand this in practical terms, I'd like to ask you a question, uh, Zulfikar. What were you doing in the middle of 2020? Oh, well. If you ask uh, uh, anybody, they're, they're going to say that we were at home. So just like them, um, I was at home uh, due to uh, the pandemic of uh, COVID-19. Okay, so in my case, I moved to Granada to Spain from England that year. And the plane that I took to fly from London to Granada happened to be the last plane that year that flew to Granada from London because the next day started the quarantine. What were your own parents and teachers doing, Zulfikar, that time? Well, so, um, like, uh, there was uh, a very furious era. Everybody had to... to just listen to the sounds of death or the news of death. So, and and everybody needed to find out a cure or a solution for the uh, risement or, uh, you know, the arising of uh, COVID-19. So we felt a great need of epidemiology by that time. So any doctor who was practicing at the time if they looked at their textbooks, they would have known nothing about COVID-19 through looking at what their education or curriculum offered them. Today, five years later, we are not in a quarantine. We are able to move around freely. We go to work and come back and do our usual chores as we did in 2019 and 2018 and the years before that. The thing that took us out of the quarantine and brought us freedom back is what is epidemiology. Because it is epidemiology that helped develop the vaccines. It is epidemiology that helped uh, develop the various treatments. Uh, it's epidemiology that help us understand how to prevent transmission. Uh, it is epidemiology that help us learn about how to treat people when they are affected by severe disease. Presumably, like I do, you also know some people who were afflicted by disease, admitted to 
intensive care unit possibly did not survive the experience uh, and are no longer with us now. In fact, my own father passed away during that time. Uh, so here we are in simple terms, think about the COVID-19 pandemic and how we get out of it to the current day, five years later. And there you have the answer. What changed the circumstances and brought us freedom back is what is epidemiology. Yeah, that's that's absolutely amazing. Like uh, by that time, we need, we don't need it. Uh, we don't need it, or we didn't need uh, uh, my other surgeons or like uh, that's something. But we needed more epidemiologists, and epidemiologists helped us to um, come out of that situation. Yeah, that that's uh, that's a good summary. Okay, so. Uh, you uh, mentioned about the COVID-19. Then um, an average student will ask the question that is it only about infectious diseases or we can also do something else through epidemiology? All right, that's a good question because classically, when we talk about epidemiology, we are talking about public health and infectious disease. And that's why I use the example of COVID-19. But the epidemiological method or the research method can be applied to all conditions uh, related to healthcare, not just to public health and infectious disease. So if we take the example of cancer as a non-communicable disease, then what are the risk factors for cancer? Uh, how can we develop prevention and treatment for cancer? All of this can be considered as an effort towards improving patient outcome through the use of epidemiological method. And because of the widespread use of this methodology across medicine and professions related to healthcare, including nursing, physiotherapy, radiology, and others, the term clinical epidemiology has now emerged and perhaps is a more relevant term today. And uh, this pertains to how evidence can be generated to make healthcare decisions. Uh, and so with this, I hope you can see that the research methodology that led to prevention and treatment and ultimately elimination of COVID can be applied also to non-communicable disease uh, across healthcare in all subjects. All right. So when we uh, study or when we attending a webinar or lecture on epidemiology, we will just think about the public health officers or public health uh, uh, researchers have to do with that. So is it really, really that or doctors have to care about and learn about uh, the um, epidemiology in order to improve the patient care or clinical practice. Sure. So we're now making a distinction between people who make public health decisions. And normally they sit in health ministry offices and they don't normally come in direct contact with patients. Uh, but you are wanting to know how the epidemiological principle or clinical epidemiological principle help doctors and nurses who on a daily basis Treat patients. Have I picked that question up correctly, uh, Zulfikar? Yes. All right. So let's think through this systematically. When a patient presents to a clinician, whether a nurse or a doctor or physiotherapist or other health professional, there is some etiology behind their presentation. On receiving the patient, and taking their history, performing their examination, and then ordering some investigations, for example, blood tests or radiology. With this information, we make a diagnosis. Once we have the diagnosis, we have an idea of the prognosis. And once we have diagnosis and prognosis knowledge, 
we want to improve the prognosis through therapy. For each of these items in the clinical process, there is a knowledge requirement which is fulfilled by etiological research, which is fulfilled by diagnostic research, which is fulfilled by prognostic and therapeutic research. The research knowledge can come from data collected